at Justice Monday. Uh, yeah, looking forward to share my experiences with you guys and see how far we can go. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Wisdom. I'd also like to mention that Wisdom is the president, or was, should I say was, the president of the Empire yeah, Society. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> I think he's, he's, uh, he's, 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 let's say he's, yeah. yeah. He's the president of the Investment Society, University of Ilori. Rashid is also the director of research. So these are like really, really, really top guys. Yeah, we would also be bringing one of our own from the Investment Society, also University of Lagos. Um, Binga, Binga, if you can just uh, introduce yourself, let us get to know you. Hey everyone, my name is Binga Oibram. I'm just passing my 300 level University of Lagos in accounting. I'm a chartered accountant. I'm a member of the Investor Society. And inside my investment banking journey, I think 2020, late 2021, early 2021, I interned in Bank of America this summer. And I think I got a full time or something like that. So, yes. Congratulations once again. And the, the, the other interesting thing is like, um, Binga mentioned or Abraham, I, I call it, I say Abraham, Abraham or Binga, anyone probably, but Abraham got chartered right before he was 20. So this is no small feat. Um did his internship before he was 20. So Abraham is really, really um one of those kind of people that, you know, these are the people that you say, oh, these are trailblazers, people that you know right from young, they they are getting it. I also like to introduce that with me on this session is Tommy Working Buddy. So Tommy Working Buddy is the head of the investment banking division at the Investment Society University of Lagos, and will be the co-host for this session. So it's me and Tommy Work that will be hosting the session. Um, before we move into all of it, I so we are still going to push back to Clara later on. Um, that should be in a couple more minutes from now. So I'm just going to speak to um the speakers that are around now so there's before we even start asking about your experience and everything there's one question that i really like to ask and if you watch previous session i've asked ask this question what two words or one word would you use to describe your internship experience but, oh rashid summarize your internship experience in just two words rashid you can go first yeah, so basically talking about my experience, I will just describe it with two words that I can easily resonate with during the internship, and that was, it was collaborative and also competitive to an extent. Collaborative in the sense that you have the opportunity to work with the team, to achieve a common goal. But talking about the competitiveness, it was competitive because you have to like, fight for the slot of getting the um, return offer to the firm so it was very very challenging so for my own end i would say it was collaborative and competitive yeah mm, very interesting how about you abraham i would say it was exposing because i got to know a lot of things with a lot of people and i was like wow it's crazy then it was a lot of tension because it's like it was just tricky, like maybe you have to be on top of on top of your game. There was no second that you want to sleep because you sleep off, you're like fuck. So it's have to be like game on every time. Mm, that's quite interesting. Interesting. And and um another thing I also know about investment banking internship is the crazy hours that I involve. So um other internship you would get anywhere from maybe uh maybe you walk get into the office by a.m. by five or six. You're out of the office for investment banking you really work late and you know you do a lot of stuff really so congratulations once again guys um how about wisdom what two words would you use to describe your internship experience yeah for the internship experience i would say number one uh exploratory and uh maybe second one maybe uh intensive right because it's a very like different ball game when you get into the job and you're trying to like secure the full time offer. But yes, actually very exploratory as well. Thank you. Yes, that's that was very, very good. That's nice. It's nice to see um um our people here from Nigeria getting into these opportunities and um very, very exciting thing to see.
All right, thank you. Um, so be, while we asked about that as a sort of icebreaker, the very next question I want to ask is about the internship itself. Like, um, if each one of you can indulge us into what you did this summer, what exactly, what team did you work in, what project did you do, um, how was it like for you? If you can just summarize it. Um, in two to three minutes, what was the internship experience like for you? I'd like you to speak more as to the project and also how you found it. So I'd like Wisdom to start with this one. Yeah, thank you very much for that question, Martins. Uh, so for my internship experience, of, of course, I didn't intend in summer, I intend uh, probably in the spring, like around uh, March to May. So yes, uh, for the internship, it was kind of like very intensive in terms of like the workflow. I interned with the leverage and acquisition finance team in the capital market division of the bank. Uh, but actually, I didn't get an offer with the team. I, I got an offer with uh, an advisory team instead. But in terms of like the project, uh, in oh, you, I worked with, I worked on then uh, as a capital market team. So it's just kind of like a supportive role as an analyst, uh, so supporting it like data around uh, Bloomberg. So I was using Bloomberg a lot. So using Bloomberg to extract data, and also in terms of like uh, building pitch books uh for of course like the analyst uh sorry the associates like uh the, the help was in general like supervising what we're doing but you are responsible for building like pitch books and uh, probably like slides on uh maybe the market outlook and probably the the bond outlook and all of those stuff right so then maybe updating a particular slide on the in terms of like the uh ecb rates uh the uh what's called the boe rate and all of those stuff right so that's for the capital market side. Well, I think I was able to like work with some advisory uh, people as well in terms of like, um, I was able to work with, with the financial sponsors group. So financial sponsors group are people that are like, they work like, uh, just like PE, if you know what private equity is, like they work uh, something like that. So but in terms of investment banking, so they, 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 they try to like pitch uh, what's called uh, possible acquisitions to uh, what's called firms that would probably want to like go into acquiring some companies. So. Uh, in terms of like the projects I, I worked on on those stuff was like trying to like build profiles and portfolio profiles of particular companies. So like the two pager uh, document and you are uh, just explain to the first page just like the company overview, the second page like the business model, right? So I think that was kind of very intensive because uh you reading a company for the first time and you're trying to like uh break the business model down into like bits such that anyone that picks the document will be able to understand. Uh, the business model of the company, right? So I was able to like work on like different companies, like in pharmaceutical companies. I worked on like online guys companies. I worked on like uh, retail companies, uh, delivery companies, and all those stuff. So I think it was kind of very like very much exploratory and like um, was informative because I was able to like uh, look across industries and understand how these business work and uh, how these businesses work, right? And how they fit in the I was good in the in the ecosystem of uh, what's called businesses in UK and also Europe as, as, as a whole. But yeah, I think that was how my internship went. Thank you very much. Hmm, that's, that sounds very, very interesting. I kept hearing the word one page, uh, slides, financial analysis, companies. Yeah. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a moment. But Ibrahim, can you go ahead and share your experience with us? All right, so um, I worked across four teams. Financial institution group. So where we work with financial institutions, banks, insurance companies, research management, fintech, insurance, insurance, just many financial institutions, we work with them. And I worked with energy, national energy, natural energy transition team, where we do power mining and climate that and I think um renewables, yes, stuff like that. Then I worked with the real estate team, gaming and lodging, gaming and real estate lodging hotels every bit of that and i work with the industrial team where we work we work across various industries like the hard industries like aeronautics and um, chemical your lifting stuff like that and um, also vehicles and stuff like that my major tasks were around a lot of exhales like a lot of exhale a lot of fax sets a lot of them um, capital iq powerpoint mm -hmm. also trying to create company profiles Trying to, I mean, there was a class I had to do, like, trying to show you whole company structure with around like 30 to 40 subsidiaries, and it had to be on one particular PowerPoint slide. So, just trying to do a lot of slides, 
company profiles, do a lot of research, like a lot of research here, because I, I mean, I, I read around like key financial statements of different companies, like how to go to them, bring out some key points, what are they saying about this part, about digital preference, what is the outlook, just trying to analyze and compare different skills with this financial statement and research here, basically. All right. Thank you very much for that. Abraham, uh, I think one thing I'd like you to help us do is that your voice is kind of muffled when you are speaking. So um, it's not very, very clear and loud. I know, I'm saying in the comments that people, some people have a problem hearing um, or hearing what you're saying. So if you can just help us adjust that. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. Rashid, if you can go next. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Martin, for the question. I believe the guys have said everything relating to IB experience and the day-to-day -day activities of IB. But personally, for my own end, I would like to say for Bank of America, we have 11 teams, and as an intern, you have to like work around all teams. So basically, before the beginning and the end of my own internship, I was opportunity to work with eight teams out of the total 11 teams. We have, first of all, my first week, it was more or less like working with the financial institution group. And in this aspect, I worked directly with the U.S. team where we had to like talk on some potentials of a financial institution that was meant to be acquired. So aside that, I was opportune to work with the financial sponsors group. And the financial sponsors group is also like talking about the private equity firms where we have to like give some advice on a deal the bank is planning to like sponsor and in the process of doing most of these things as an intern you are meant to carry out research in the industry and what are the most possible strategic acquisition for the company but one of the transactions i worked on that most interests me is working with the industrial team and during the course of these activities, I was able to build the work analysis and do the valuation of an AI company. And the experience of the deal itself like made me to like learn a lot of things in the greater and greater world of investment banking. Because during the course of this experience, I was able to join calls with head of investment banking globally, where they have to like give opinions, give ideas and rationales on why a deal is possible and why a deal is actually the best deal to invest on. And aside from that, I work with other teams on PowerPoint. I built a lot of PowerPoint during my, um, during my internship because on this process, I built something called um, company's profile. And the company's profile is generally called a one pager profile where you have to like state the key information about a company and in the company profile they will be looking for something in terms of the company's description looking for the company's financials looking for the company's management looking for the share performance and all that so these are some of the experience i was able to like garner during my internship and it was quite a whole lot for me actually thank you yeah thank you Thank you very much for that. Just to summarize some of the things they've all mentioned. So like I, I'm even actually paying close attention to a lot of the things. I'm hearing PowerPoint. So if you are considering applying for the coming internship, um, which applications are open already, by the way, PowerPoint, right? Very, very important. Many a lot of things around financial modeling, right? Um, deal advisory, being able to um, understand information and being able to piece it together in something of sort of a one pager. And like, I think a one pager is really like the holy grail of like, um, research is like, you have done a lot of research, research about companies and you have to just make everything fit into one page. So this is, um, very, very insightful. And I think that for people that are actually applying, these are some things to pay attention to. So while we still wait for Clara, another key question that I've got here that I really, really want to know that I want to ask for our speakers is about the interview process, really. Like, how was the interview process like for you? I'd like if you can be a bit um, very, very um, pragmatic in response. If you start out with like, oh, I went through the first stage, which is the application stage, filling out the online form. I did X amount of interviews. Then I got my feedback in within two weeks, within three weeks, within two days. And um, uh, I got all the old information and everything in total. The total timeline for the application process was in X amount of months. So I would like Abraham to go first, right? So Abraham, what was the 
interview process like we're going to come back to like questions and all those things but like what was the process like for you in terms of the timeline and everything all right thank you sorry thank you for my voice is clearer now yeah so, it's better now it's better thank you all right so i applied around i'm not sure but i think ending of october or early november because i know i was close to the deadline when i applied I just felt so i'd written my essay since around september but I've done a lot of edits on it. Like I've always reviewed my essay consistently. Even my CV, my CV had like had like how many review, how many like had a lot of um a lot of versions. Yes, because I kept on reviewing everything. Then I submitted very little to the deadline. I was like, let's just try our luck. So I think I got then I did the IR view immediately. Took my time, prepared a bit, spoke to my friends, and got a lot of tips from my friends that had done it before me. So I just used the normal questions they got, which was questions about sampling, questions about them about yourself, why the bank, why investment banking. Yeah, those are the kind of questions I got. Then questions about when did I have to do multiple things together and how did I manage my time and getting a good output. Then the next question, the next stage was, I think I got a mail requesting confirmation of my work results. And I think yeah, ad admission letter or something like that. But I know I got email confirming my results, so I sent that in. That was really like around two weeks after. Then I got the email for my telephone interview, although I missed the email. So I think we were in school that time, so I was trying to submit assignments and every bit of it. So I didn't know I had my telephone interview on a Friday. So the interview were family, I wanted to call me. Like I think two hours for the interview that, hey, I sent you an email, I didn't check your email. I want to have an interview in the next two hours. And I was like, wow, fuck, what am I doing next? So I just called a few of my friends and I was like, geez. And I went down, I went to eat, I drank water, I listened to music and I just entered the interview. And it asked me a lot of questions. The questions were literally, so I think the telephone interview, they kind of revolve around valuation, um, beta and work. That's where, like, where my questions came from. Although, mm -hmm. so what helped me with that, because I've done a lot of projects personally, a very from investor society, and also the fact that I done ICANN, so a lot of SFM, I would done valuation, work, beta. So I knew like the in and out. So I was able to answer most of my questions, even though I think I made a mistake in like one of the questions and the I tried to be like, oh, that, that, that's against the theory of this valuation. And I was like, wow. So even now to like explain it to me during the interview, because my interview was really long. So it was supposed to be but it took like 40 minutes because he had to explain what I missed out. So I was like, no problem, I would improve on it. Then I think I asked me some questions where I was able to show him that, oh, yes, I knew what I was saying. And I also differentiated myself because I told him I had done some projects on financial crisis, look at macro reports, and it was like, oh. And luckily for me, it was a research person also, like coming from OEU, mm -hmm. and also he was really interested in stuff like that. So I think that was what made me kind of stand out, especially. Then after that, I had the email for my, for my final interview. And I think I'm, I was terrible with emails that time, and I'm trying to get better because I didn't know I had a final interview email. Because mm. it was my friends that were like, let's check our emails, whether something has put I was like, well, let me check my email. I, just, I was like, fuck, after an interview, and I'm like, Jesus, what am I thinking of? I just quickly just packed off my stuff and like, oh, let's do how to prepare. So that time I read 400 investment banking questions and I read Joshua and Joshua investment banking. Um, it was like a kind of textbook. So I read it like almost everything. I think in one of my readings, I, I exempted LBU because I struggled with, I struggled then with understanding how LBU works. So I was like, it was also necessary stress. and. And I was like, it will not come out. Luckily for me, it did not come out. So I got major acquisition key study in my final interview. And I think the telephone interview and the final interview were just like, I think two weeks gap. Yes, two weeks. So it was my, my final interview was on December 9th. So I got the email that I had qualified for it, December 2nd. Then I did my telephone interview a week before that December 2nd. So it was like, it was like a two weeks gap. So I just prepared and I just did what I could do basically. Then the interview was, was was nice. It was nice. I'm the first the technical interview was very good. I mean, I was able to answer most of the question. Even the interview, I was like, oh, we've answered most of my question. Then he asked me one last question and I fumbled it. It was like, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And I was like, okay, no problem. Was like, so then my then the next question and interview was my um Bivra interview. So that was the director in the TMT team. And mm. I I I didn't really prepare for that because I just felt I mean it's it should be something that it's just about me basically. So I just felt, so and what I did that helped me my viewers because I had like a, a, a 500 word essay that I wrote. So that essay was just talking about all my finance experience basically. So just like an, a general essay. 
So I just have to just go through it. And I just feel any question they want to ask me, you tell me about the time when I did this, you did that. I already, I already had it in my finance essay. So I just have to just bring it up from that long essay and just answer him basically. So I didn't really like prepare and all. So I just did it. Even though there was network That's issue. And it was an Indian. Yeah, preparation. yeah. Actually, so even though it was an Indian, so we had a lot of accent issues. Like I kept on being like, eh, can you come again? And I was like, can you come again? And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So it was very like back and forth, but it was good at the end of it. And I got my feedback for that I got in, I think Friday, on the is it Tuesday or Monday? I think on the Monday morning, I was at AKT reading and I was like, geez. Then the Indian in director called me, even though I didn't hear most of what he said, I just knew I, I heard you've been accepted or something like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. yes, and I was like screaming, I don't touch my phone. So that was the basically, so that was mm -hmm. the end. That was like how the official process was like for me, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for that. I'd also like to tell you that Abraham is saying, oh, I did not prepare. I did not prepare. You have to take that word um, with a pinch of salt, all right? Because he, he, he goes ahead to say, oh, I did not prepare on one hand. Then the next thing he says is, oh, I have an essay that I've written. Oh, I did not prepare, but I've read 400 investment banking, 400 um, uh, page investment banking guide, uh, right? He's read those things. Those are preparation. So, Another thing that I also picked up from what you mentioned is that preparation doesn't have to be organic per se. Like it doesn't have to be straight line rather. It can be organic. It doesn't have to follow a definite process. And usually when you go to interviews, they are usually a combination of all the things that you've, you know, gathered in the past, your previous knowledge, what of the things that you've learned in the past, your previous experience. So definitely in the interviews position, it's not everything you are going to be able to answer immediately but by you know doing a lot of research reading about these things you can definitely when it's time towards the interview you are definitely prepared so you have very little work to do right so you've read a lot of things you've done your research then you know that okay fine when it's time for the interview i can go ahead and face it i don't have to do the um, last minute rush to apply and also last minute rush to you know, be able to answer the question. So thank you very much for that, um, um, Abraham. I think we'd move on to wisdom. Oh, damn. Yeah, thank you very much, Martins. Uh, so for HSBC, I think uh, the the application process is quite like very direct. So you don't need an essay. You just need your CV while applying at first, right? So you submit your application. Uh, I think they, they request for like a particular uh, credentials right but it's just a cv that's the only document that you'll be uploading for for the application okay. and uh immediately you submit the application uh you get the an email for the online massive test so online massive assessment sorry so for the online massive assessment it's just like uh a personality test and i think we touch of numerical test and other tests like that so you're just testing your understanding of their values, uh, understanding of your uh, what's called your skill set, and also understanding of your preferences in terms of like your personal preferences, and also like your, your numerical reasoning ability as well, right? Because if you're applying for investment banking, you have to be uh, of course, you're talking about numerical uh, exercises, right? So I think that's just for the online immersive assessment. So um, you get like the report for the online massive assessment within three days. Uh, things, yeah, within three days, a max of three days, you get the report. So uh you, you get you get to know if you progress to the next stage or not right so but if you progress to the next stage uh you get the job simulation test so the job simulation test is just like another test and um yeah so for job simulation test the test is uh very much direct uh but this is kind of like more uh inclined towards the role you are applying to so for investment banking uh this is kind of like more in in depth in terms of like what the uh role inquire in, uh, entails right so uh, for investment banking you do like a major acquisition case study so you like you give like uh you give your opinion on the major acquisition case study and also there are, there are some few ramp other questions as well and in in, in inside the uh, job simulation test there's a there are video questions that you get to answer as well right so just uh get prepared for so the, the video questions are around behavioral interviews and also like your uh analytical skills as well then also like maybe your scheduling skills i think something like that right so your ability to like prioritize tax and all of those right so i think they want to test that and see how well you you fit in that in that position uh so i think that's for the job simulation test 
uh, job simulation test. Yeah, exactly. So after job simulation test, I think in three days he gets. Um, was it three days? Sorry, I'm trying to check the. Yeah, so for job simulation test, yes, in three days you get the uh, application status update, right? So that that will give you the notion that okay, fine, you 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 pass the minimum benchmark for the job simulation test, right? So after that, they will tell you that they will review your application in detail now, because I think before the job simulation test, HR does not have access to your application, right? They are just doing everything. So I think there's an algorithm that see that checks the. Uh, what's called the, the minimum benchmark and just put, you just proceed to the next stage, right? So after you must have passed the minimum benchmark for the destination test, then HR gets to like look into the applications, uh, what's called, uh, in detail. Maybe that's when you look at your uh, video interviews, uh, your MA question and answer, and your CV, probably, right? Then uh, after that, I think, uh, yes, so in in maybe like uh probably like one month two months time you get the invite so i think for the virtual assessments virtual experience day so it's the assessment center so that that varies actually so it depends on which time of the application season you apply right so if you apply very early you might get the assessment center very late uh but if you apply very late you might get the assessment center very early because they have tried to like close up the uh what's called the 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 uh applications right and again it is kind of like um what do you call it again it's on a rolling basis yeah so like the, the earlier you apply the earlier you get selected for this rule and roles get filled up uh as as applications are, are submitted right so uh then for the virtual experience day i think for myself right uh i got the virtual experience day like uh i think i'll be doing the virtual, virtual experience day on a wednesday afternoon no wednesday morning i got the uh invite the mail invite on a monday morning and that was like around two months after was it two months i think so yeah i think it was around yeah two two months yeah because I, I applied in october and got the virtual assessment center in december so it was like around two months after all of these applications right so uh, and uh it, so i think so the lag was like around like maybe like four, 14 hours for me to like prepare for the uh, final assessment center and for the assessment center it was like a four session as uh, was a four session and four okay it was four sessions but it was 30 minutes each for each session right so you have the situational interview you no know, strength and weakness interview then the behavior and situational interview then uh technical interview question one and technical interview questions two so like so the technical interview has like two uh session which is one hour in total and 30 minutes each right so of course uh i probably i've not mentioned how i was able to prepare to all of this because i think uh again like it's kind of like very much structured right so it's so it's kind of so before you can get um the ability to see someone or probably to to, to interview someone until the virtual experience day but i think i was able to like connect with a few persons of course uh it was hard finding Someone, uh, someone that has gotten the offer uh, from Nigeria. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see anyone. But I was opportune to see uh, a guy studying in the US that got the offer in US, right? So as far he was based in the US, so I reached out to him, and I think he was very helpful in terms of like showing me, uh, telling me the necessary uh, what's called things to look out for in the interview. And I, I was preparing even without the even without seeing the because i think within these two months i was interning at cardinal stone at that point so i was preparing for all of these interviews while interning and uh of course the relation the relation mails are coming here and there for all of these applications i was just continuously preparing for uh this i uh, was called for that very email that would uh invite into the assessment center and i got it eventually so i think uh those two that two day uh what's called uh timeline in terms of like preparing for the actual interview was not a problem for me because I was I was preparing before then. So I think I just went into the interview and the interview went on smoothly. And for HSBC, you get to know if you got the offer the next day, right? So and I got the call the next day, uh, I got the offer. And uh, yes, so I think that was how the whole process went. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that wisdom. Thank you for the description. So one thing I also picked up from what wisdom said is prepare while you wait. So like while you are waiting for the firm to get back, you don't just sit back and relax, right? You prepare because, and one thing you also mentioned the fact that, I mean, a lot of rejections. So usually it's not 
it's not like you apply to one firm and that's the only firm you apply to and you get the offer. Usually, it's, um, sometimes it might be that way for you. I mean, you might be very, very lucky to just, you know, make it be your only application and you get the offer. But for a lot of people, usually it's usually a combination of different things that you've, different companies that you've applied to. So yeah, thank you very much for that wisdom so now uh clara is on the call with us so we'll just move on to clara now clara if you can just introduce yourself i would like you to speak about your background and also um your internship experience how was it what project did you work on and how was the overall experience for you um okay thank you very much matthew and thank you all for having me um let me just know if you can hear me clearly Yes, yes, we can. We can. Okay, cool. Um, so hi everyone. Um, Mr. Clara Fokuzo, but you can just call me Clara. So I am a Cameroonian, but I am studying business administration now, um, at Ashes University, and um, my internship was really good. I interned at Bank of America, just like Abraham and uh, Rashid mentioned, and I was in the investment banking division. So um, sharing how my background. So um, I, I did an, uh, an internship in my first year of school, but it was more of like in consulting. And it was like, it was just so routine for me because it was more of like reading reports. And I was just looking out like to do something that was more um, technical and to just push myself. And during my second year, I did lots of applications and I didn't get in, even Bank of America, I applied there, but I didn't get in. So I started reaching out. So I saw, so my school has like a career service and someone interned at Bank of America, but their internship was in the operations division. And I just sent her a cool email. I was like, hi, like I I saw that the career service uh, posted you and you did this internship. And I really want to get to Bank of America or just to have like an international internship. Can you mentor me? And she was like, who is this girl? So it was just like very random. I didn't know her, I just sent her the cool email. And then she responded and she was like, Clara, okay, let's meet on campus at one of the cafeterias on top of, on top of our age. So I met with her and then she explained to me how the process was, but she told me that like, it's not, she didn't do investment banking and she doesn't know um, how the whole investment process was, investment banking division was like, but then she knows someone that interned at Jeffries and she could refer me to the person to get guidance from. So she referred me to the person and then I reached out to the person. I was just like on the person's back, like, can you explain to me how was it like for you? When should I apply my ACs and everything? And then while I was at, at that, um, someone posted, so uh, uh, James, James posted, James Olainka, he posted on LinkedIn of how he got an offer into Bank of America. And mind you, before that, I had been reaching out to people like, hey, can you help me? When I see someone's post, I'll send them a connection. Then I'll send like, can you help me with this? And most times people wouldn't respond to my LinkedIn message. So I reached out to James and then James responded. And he's like the other person. He told me, Clara, like, it's not investment banking. I'm applying, like, I got my internship uh, in tech. So, um, but I, I'm ready to, like, help you. I mean, behavioral questions are most times all the same. So he was helping me and guiding me. And, yeah, so, like, overall, that's how I ended up having the internship. And then um, how my internship was in summary, I think that it was very, very nice. It, it was, like, a good learning opportunity for me. And I learned so much, just not just about like the role, but about myself. Because like I noticed that sometimes like I I, I got like really can um anxious on the job. But then just knowing that like having to do the thing over and over, like towards the end of my internship, I was just like relatively calm, like compared to when I just started off with my internship. And uh, you asked what are some of the projects that I worked on. I think uh I'm not very sure, but like I'm among like my other African interns, I got to work with like so many teams. I think I work averagely with like eight teams. So I work with the industrial team, I work with T TMT, which is like the tech the tech team basically. Um, I did some work with the healthcare, the consumer retail team, like so quite a number of teams, right? But the teams that I worked the most with were industrials and then I worked with TMT the most. And then I did some work too with like the natural resource team. And the kind of work that I was doing, um, I'm not sure if the other people shared. I think I heard Rashid saying that he did more of PowerPoint. So that was basically the same with me. So like I would be giving a 
particular page or some pages to work on. And then I will do the pages and then I'll send it to the analyst or to the associate I'm working with. And then they'll give me comments and then I'm going to do it again. And then I'll refer it back to them. And one thing that I also learned that I'd never done before was like facet. So I was doing like a lot of, so I, initially I was just doing like mostly um, facet, like researching data on facet, but later on, um, when I was giving some excels, I had to check like how to understand in order to understand the work that was given to me. I had to know how like the formula that is on the Excel sheet, like what is it saying? And so it really helped boost like my technical skills and my Excel skills and also helped me to like learn another key um software that is used like in the financial space. So that was a very good experience for me. Um and yeah, I got some corrections, like a lot of corrections from some of my work and other work that I got like really excellent. And I really enjoy working with some people. There's a certain analyst that I got my first tax with, like during my second week of my internship, and I got to work with him to like the last day of my internship. So it was a very nice experience for me. I met really amazing people, um, people that are very inspiring. Um, someone like Rashid, Abraham, other white interns as well. Like it was a very nice experience for me. So yeah. Hmm. Thank you very much for that. I'm really, really yeah. glad to hear that. It was a very nice experience for you for you. One thing I also picked off while you were speaking about your experience pre the interview or pre applying to Bank of America was the fact that you used LinkedIn to reach out. I also know James. And we also even had James um for the data edition of the Insight series. And also that's something that I also like to, I feel like it's something worth restating that LinkedIn is really, really that gold mine. Like it's it has it has been really helpful even for me and also for a lot of people that I've spoken to, like they mentioned LinkedIn, reach out, personalize the invite so that when you are reaching out, they know exactly why you are reaching out to them. They are always willing to help when you reach out to the purpose so they can, oh, this is what this person wants. So very, very important thing is like why you're also preparing for your application. Um, you want to get more insight and also be very specific in what you're asking so that they can provide very, very specific um, question, uh, answers to your questions rather. Thank you very, very much for that, Clara. So I think we'll just I move think, on think, now. Sir, before, just to like re reiterate on something that you mentioned about like the uh, being direct when you reach out to LinkedIn. So I noticed that like most most times when people reach out, like there's so someone who just be like, hello, hi, um, hi, Clara, or and like you don't say what, what um, you want to say. So like sometimes like when you reach out to someone be very direct because most people wouldn't have the patience to like wait for you to say hello hi the back and forth before you say that okay i want this so like when you reach out to someone like just be very direct with them like say that this is what i want and also if you want to like you for, for me if like someone reaches out to me and say okay I, um, I want to apply to Bank of America and I have done this, this, this research, but I need help with this. It's better than someone who just reach out and they're just like, um, I just like saw that you got an internship with Bank of America um, and I need you to like do this for me, right? So like you want to show the person that you've actually like done your research, you've made some effort. I mean, you might not necessarily like do that research research, but like show the person that like you have done my homework. I know a little bit of it. Not like you're trying to like, um, show like to like I know a lot of things but like just show them that okay I'm not just reaching out because I want you to like spoon feed me but I've, maybe I, I I started applying already but I need help in this specific area of my application and then if you can help me so please don't send an email to, don't send like a connection I just say hello hi or when they connect you just send them like hi I'm waiting for them to respond even in your personalized invite you can tell them just very shortly why you're reaching out to them Thank you. Thank you very much for that, for restating that, Clara. It's something that we also need to mention from time to time. Very, very important. So one thing that, I mean, a lot of people actually reach out to um, previous intents for, like, I, 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 I presume that a lot of people are already in DMs now asking, oh, how was the interview process like? What were some questions that you got? um how, how did you prepare for this so this also leads to my next question but this time i'm going to start with abraham so what were some common questions that you got um during the interview process and what were some resources that you can refer back to and say ha ah, yeah this resource was very very helpful for me in answering this question this thing really sharpened my knowledge so what were some questions some common questions that you got and what were some resources that you can point to that were very, very helpful for you? All right, so um, I think the questions I got, 
So for my behaviorals, they were mostly team related questions. Questions about tell me about the time when you were in the team. Tell me about when you're in the team, what problems do you face? Tell me about the time, why the bank, why the team. Also, I I, I for my behaviorals, I just use a regular TIS 6 a.m. routine on Fridays to just drive my questions we ask around and just use it to prepare. Then also I spoke to some of my friends that have done it before me to get the questions. Then for the technical aspect, they're majorly around valuation, calculating work and beta. Then major acquisitions, I knew it in and out. You know, you understand synergies, understand how do you value a company? What, um, what valuation multiple do you use? What ratios do you use to do this? And also, what else again? I use the phone regression bank questions and Joshua and Joshua. Those are my two good tools for technicals. Then I also had some background knowledge. So if you've done, I can especially SFM, you would have done a lot of work better, like a lot of it. And if you go through it really well, you really understand it. Because that's what helped me, like for my technicals. Because I kind of, even though I didn't really take it, but I just remember like, oh, yes, I've done it. And that was basically. Mm. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Abraham. And one thing Abraham mentioned is behaviors, actually. So for the behaviors, there's one thing we actually used to do at TIS is we, every Friday, we have our behaviors every Friday morning, actually, by 6 a.m. We have our behaviors where we ask some of these common questions that you kind of come across during the interview. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about when you had to work with a team. Um, how do you undo failure and this kind of thing? And it's really nice to hear that Abraham referred back to to this um, to this experience. So yeah, Abraham also mentioned. I'm just restating it for those that might have missed it. He also mentioned the 400 um, 400 investment banking question and answer. Very very important. I think that's like a I think that that's a a, a common recommendation that you would get. I I remember when I was I think 2020 when I was also trying to do IB. I remember someone giving me that and reading it um, from cover to cover, then also Vault Guide too. Then you also mentioned um, Joshua and Joshua. I'll be in touch with Abraham if we can get some of these resources with him. Then for those that register, oh, thank you for sharing. Then thank you for sharing that in the chat, John. Then for those that registered to attend the session, I would send out emails that probably maybe links to this materials or maybe um where yeah, you can buy them so thank you very much once again for that abraham we're going to move on to wisdom now um you're the one here that did not uh intern at bank of america so like what were some of the common questions that you got right and what were some resources that you can point to and say ha huh, these things really helped me Yeah, thank you very much, Martin, for that question. Uh, so I think one of the materials that opens the 400 investment banking question um, for the technical interview part, uh, uh, that was very helpful. That was the first session of the technical interview, but oh, oh, although I just saw like one or two questions out of the four, uh, the, the, 400, the, the 400 investment banking question is actually not like, you don't really have to like, uh, cram it verbatim or something like that. It's just the understanding of the valuation and financial model in that speaks to uh, how you can be able to address these questions when asked, right? So I think then for uh, what's called this, the other in terms of any kind of view, there was like pitching of stock. So you have to have a stock to pitch. So like commercial awareness, right? Being able to like follow news, uh, uh, what's called uh, up, up to date, you've been up to date on news, your commercial awareness has to be on point, right? So you have to be able to like speak to recent happiness in the industry and also how it affects your, your, your division, right? Then. But the behavior interviews, like uh, again, like uh, being able to 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 tell, uh, sorry, to show your story rather than tell it, right? Because there's a difference, the big difference between telling and showing a story. If I say I'm a footballer, right? That's that's me telling you guys that I'm a footballer. But if I to, tell you guys that I play in the Nigerian uh, what's called uh, national team as a footballer, then that that's me showing to you guys that I'm a footballer. So you want to be able to show your experiences as much as possible so that they can be able to relate to them, right? Because anybody can just say anything, right? So I think that that was very much helpful and being uh, adding examples to to all of your explanations as much as possible. 
that that gives like uh what's called your it gives your answers uh content right so because you want to be able to like uh I'll address every question as much as possible. Then I think for the, my viewer questions, YouTube videos were very much helpful. Uh, some channels, uh, I, 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 Kenji Talks, uh, Afsa Zain and uh, Wall Street, was right? So those those three channels were very much uh, helpful when I was preparing for my behavior interviews because uh, there they, they are questions uh, that, that are kind of repeated and it's just like, there's something around there, your, your, your ability to work in a team, your, your understanding of the of the of the of the what's called of the division you're joining why investment banking why the bank why you and uh why uh what's called why why not other other what's called other roles right so i think all of those those youtube channels helped while i was preparing then also in terms of like uh the the, the financial modeling and valuation uh, uh knowledge uh, i would say uh, of course, I was able to like build up a model myself, right? So I think being able to like do these things while learning them is very much important. It gives you that uh, confidence, and also it gives you that that uh, avenue to like speak to it when you are when you are doing your interviews, right? So let's say, for example, uh, an interviewer asks you, "I'll walk me through it this year." Then you can just say, "Oh, wow, well, I was doing a project on a particular company. I have done it this year for a particular company. I did this. I did that. I did that." That that shows. Uh, even beyond understanding this, that shows your motivation for the work you're trying to apply for, right? So I think that's very much important in terms of like uh, what's it called, uh, showing examples as much as possible. Then uh, for for behavior interviews, I would say for behavior interviews, they are as much as uh, what's called as much as necessary as your technical interviews. If you're saying you you are applying for ID and all you want to do is just technical interviews, I think. You're on the wrong path, right? Because again, the interviewing skills and also uh, your ability to attend to all of these behavioral questions is actually very much important. Because at the end of the day, uh, I think it's about having being perfect. It's not being perfect, but doing well in all of the interviews rather than three over four interviews, maybe like two over four interviews. You have to be able to like do well in all of the interviews. So if you are very good in any kind of interview and your behavioral interview is shitty, then of course you're not getting the offer, right? So and again, like. The real interview is much more important because that shows your your uh, ability to relate with others and all of those, right? So you want to make sure you you, you put uh, enough uh, what's called concentration on the previous interviews as well as uh, you're doing the technical interviews. But I think yeah, overall you should be fine. You should be fine. If, if. Thank you very much. That's thank you, thank you very much for that. I would like um, Rashid to jump in on this one. So thank you, Martin. So basically, Abraham has said the processes of Bank of America questions, but I would just like to like itemize it based on the way it is being structured. So the way Bank of America works is in your application process, you are expected to follow up to five stages application processes. First of all, you will be like doing the um, submission of your CV and your cover letter, which is you expressing yourself, expressing your interest in the bank, and expressing why you are the best candidate for the division you are applying to. And after doing that, the next stage is you are going to do your IR view. So basically, how the IR view works is if you are applying for the first month of the application, automatically you are getting an IR view. That is, it is going to be an automatic interview, uh, IR view, which for my own end is not something I advise people to like, I apply for because of the fact that you are getting an automatic IR view and not an IR view that is given to you after reviewing your essay and your cover letter. So it is proper if you are applying your application probably a month after where you have to be reviewed, they have to like see your CV, see your cover letter and every other thing before sending you the IR view. And in that aspect, it shows that you are a better candidate and the bank is already considering you for a rule. And after the IRV, the IRV process is just considered to be a video interview session whereby you are being asked questions on what time do you join a team? How did you react to mistakes? What time did you like work on the project together to achieve a common goal? So those are the basis of IRV questions, which I personally have the resources with me that can be shared. And also talking about the phone call interview, that's when the journey to investment banking started actually because I remember when I received my own phone call interview, it was just a two hours interval from the time I have the interview 
I have the mail around 10 a.m. and I was meant to have the interview around um, 12 p.m., which is to tell you that in your preparation processes, prepare ahead before even getting any mail from the bank. It can hmm. come anytime. It can come anytime. Some student got it one week before, but sometimes it might just be immediately interview for you so that you won't have time to prepare for yourself. And the phone call interview itself is just like having a thorough understanding of your um, valuation processes, which is one of the core functions of an investment banking firm. Because in my um, phone call interview, it was basically technical where I'm being asked what is weighted average cost of capital, how do you determine your weighted average cost of capital, how do you project this, is your DCF analysis. So just understand every information going to your DCF analysis going to your comparable analysis and going to your precedent transaction analysis. Because questions have been asked. I had a session with a student recently, and in the process of prepping the student, I kind of asked, what is your work analysis? And the kind of student was kind of telling me, uh, yeah, KD, KE, and the likes. And I was like, what is the meaning of KE, KD? And because in the process of you telling yourself or talking about your understanding of all these valuation methodologies, you should be ex able to express that you truly know it and you've done something about these things before and not just about you reading from a particular material that, okay, to calculate cost of equity, KE, KD or something. You should be able to tell them that cost of debt, cost of equity, how to determine those things. They are very, very important. And talking about the last round of interview for Bank of America, basically, you'll be having something called the competency-based interview and the behavioral interview. So basically, how the competency slash case study interview works is you'll be given a, an M&A case study prior to your interview time, which is if you're having your interview around 1 p.m., you'll be given the M&A case study 12 p.m., just because of the network issue you might be facing in Nigeria generally or in Africa. So we are being given the case study one hour before our interview time and we are asked to like look at it and they share the case study during the interview session. Which question have been asked on? First of all, you have to talk about the strategic rationale. The strategic rationale in the sense that what does the two companies tend to benefit when mm. they are merging together or when one company is um, acquiring another company. And in the case of the company that were given to us, it was more or less like a company operating in Europe and trying to like acquire another company in India. So you have to tell them, why is this a best acquisition for the company? Why do you think it is good for this company? So in the case study, you have to like look at all the items and give it out to them and tell them the strategic rationale, okay, the business will be expanded to another region, fine, which means expanding to India, we made them have another customer base, which will expand their business revenue and others. So these are the things they are looking out for. You have to talk about the strategic rationale. Aside the talking about the strategic rationale, you have to like talk about the financials. Financials in the sense that how should this company be acquired? Because we have presented another multiple question. Multiples in the sense that they'll give you different comparable multiples, such like the EV to sales, EV to EBITDA, EV to EBIT. So you as an interviewee, you have to tell them which of the best multiples to be used in valuing this company that the company is projecting to acquire. And it is something you need to understand that you have to understand all the multiples. You have to understand where they are being used when is EV to sales being used? When is EV to EV that being used? These questions will be coming up for you if you are doing your interview. And the final round of the interview, which is something I would like to talk about, is it is called behavioral, but sometimes, just like this Dom said, it is behavioral but kind of technical as well, because of the fact that I remember doing my interview, it was meant to be a question where they will ask. When do you like to join a team? How oh, was your best team structure and the likes? But at the end of my own behavioral interview, it ends up with technical questions. And how does it end up in technical questions? It shows that anytime you are preparing your CV, 
your CV itself is just creating another set of questions for you. So mm. if you are preparing a CV, you should not just lie to your CV. In your CV mm. that, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. Because in my own CV, I put something like saying I've created models before. And mm. funny enough, I was asked to like, okay, send me the model you've built in the past during the interview session and the interviewer who is the director in industrial group gave me uh, gave me his personal email and i sent him the uh, model that i built and we started like working around the models mm -hmm. this is a behavioral question turned to technical question based on what i have on my cv so which means if you are presenting your cv it should be something you can defend 100 percent if you put any line item in terms of i can build the model automatically you should be able to defend it that yeah you've built the model in the past and you can talk on all scenarios of the model what was your valuation price what was your upside what was your downside this is a very very much important in your interview processes so that's just all for my own end thank you thank you so much thank you so much rashid lawa thank you i also like to mention that um, rashid and and the team from university of Illori and this year they won the CFA Institute Equity Research Challenge for um, for universities in Nigeria, and um, these guys are really really amazing guys. Uh, Rashid was also a competitor. I also like to mention that I also did CFA. Um, but one of the things that that he mentioned that kept you know when he kept mentioning, I just kept remembering: don't lie on your CV. And I've said this a couple times: was don't lie. Be, 100% honest when you're speaking about the things that are your CV so that when you get to an interview situation, you can speak to whatever you have there. So just to summarize a lot of the things that um, our speakers have mentioned, um, Wisdom mentioned the importance of commercial awareness, being on top of the news, knowing exactly what is happening. And also you don't have to cram everything like, okay, 400 investment banking question and answer. It doesn't have to be, oh, you have to know a word for word. And I also feedback to what Rashid said. Okay, you don't just have to know what the textbook definition is. Do you understand these things in depth? Can you explain it better? Instead of throwing buzzwords around, what do you understand? What is EV to EV? How would you explain EV to EV that to someone that's not even doing investment banking? How would you simplify this process so that they can understand? So these are some of the things that I really picked up uh, from the uh, from the insights that a lot of the speakers have shared. I think we're really running late on time now, so I think we can begin to move on to the Q&A. Uh, I'll, I'll be handing over to Tomiwa now, so Tomiwa will be handling the Q&A session. Hello, Tomiwa, are you, are you here with us? Wisdom and Clara. So now it would be open to questions, and I know there's a question in the chat box, but just before I read it out, if you have um, any question, you can just do all to indicate by raising up your hand, or you can just type it in the chat box. Um, so the first question is directed to Wisdom, and this is from YouTube. So it says, um, how can I structure my CV when applying to HSBC as regards the arrangement, and what specific tips can you give to be there? And um, also, I think this is a general question um, to all the speakers. How many applications did all the speakers make before they got the rules? Uh, okay, I think I will just take the question in terms of like algorithm. So when I was saying algorithm was, um, maybe when I mentioned algorithm was Fagra, I said uh, your CV does not, it's not like your CV is um, created by an algorithm or something, right? I'm just saying that the, the online has a massive test and the job submission test is uh, as like a minimum benchmark that you have to meet, right? It's like a, a, a structured exam, right? Or a, a structured assessment that you have to meet. So the HR does not like have uh, access to, maybe like does not review your, 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 your assessments up until you must have completed the job submission test and passed the minimum benchmark. So that's what I meant. So it's not like the, uh, the algorithm checks your CV to determine whether you get the online massive test. As I've said, right, the online massive test comes immediately. It's almost immediately after you apply for uh, the uh, apply after you apply, then you, you get the online massive test. Then after that, after maybe in three days time, you get the I was going to finish the test. Then in three days time, you get the, the email whether you passed the minimum benchmark or not. So it's not like the uh, algorithm checks your CV or not. No, not at all. 
And how many, how, how many, so who was the second question again, Tomo? Oh, yes, so the second question says, how many applications did the speakers make before they got their rows? So I think like, how many um, times did you try before you actually got that one row? Oh, okay, so for HSBC, it was my first time trial. But, for, yeah, but I got rejections from other banks. So yes, that was mine. Can you put a number to it? Like on average, how many rejections did you get? <laughs> 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 okay, for, for the number of rejections, I would say probably, uh, yeah, I would say like maybe like 13 plus, around like, yeah, 13 plus rejections, yeah, 13 plus. In one year? Yeah, yeah, because I applied to like a lot of like uh, board bracket banks and like middle bracket banks. As well. so, <laughs> yes, and I applied to like firms outside of that, like in general, like uh, probably Blackstone, uh, Black Pro, all of those stuff. So, so yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's a massive number. It's not All easy. Right, thank you. <laughs> anyway, right. Um, thank you for that wisdom. Um, so Rashid and Abraham and Sarah. On average, how many uh, uh, rejections did you get before you landed um that one offer? All right. So I applied for Goodman. But I don't think Goodman actually read my application because they never go back to me. Then I applied for Bank of America, London, and South Africa. South Africa didn't even look at my application too. But so I, I technically did not get any other rejection at all. So I just go too far because even guys know you get back to me at all. They're like, who is this guy? Thank you for that, Abraham. Um, Rashid. Yeah. So personally, for me, right, I only apply to the top banks, just like the likes of um, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America. But I got a lot of rejections, actually, because the first application processes I started was applying to the New York firms, which they were just rejecting me. But at the end of the whole application processes, I was able to like get to Credit Suisse, Bloomberg, Bank of America. Yeah, so those three specifically. So, I got some rejections, which is, let's just say, 10 rejections as well. But it was all to the New York office and Goodman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley that did not reach out to me. But at the end, I was happy that the CV I have was able to, like, scale me through the applications of the likes of UBS. Because for UBS, I got to the last stage, and I even got it as well. But it was just the New York office, which had the long run. You have to like reject based on the visa and everything. But for UBM, credit suits, I got credit suits as well. And I did an interview for Bloomberg and Bank of America. Yeah, thank you. Um, All right, thank you, Rishi. Yeah, okay. So for me, um, if it's in terms of like putting a number to the applications, I'll say um, like for every company that I apply to, I apply like two. So um, I applied to Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Blackwalk um what other company did i apply to yeah but like quite a number of them and then what i did like in my like i mentioned in my second year when i was applying to bank of america i was applying to the u.s office but then like for those of us who are coming from africa it's not likely that you get an offer there because of like visa issues and everything so that that could also be like another thing like when you're applying try to avoid applying to the u.s office because even if you i know a friend of mine school who got an offer with blackrock but couldn't go because it was in the u.s office so um they had to like transfer office but that's just a special case because there have been cases where people had and like it was just taken away because not like taken away but like it was cancelled because like they couldn't get their visas right so um that could be something that you you should consider when you're applying so yeah like the rejections would normally come right like you get them you just have to it's a numbers game so the more companies that you apply like your first application will not be like your, your last application because like when you get that one rejection you, you start asking yourself like what did i do wrong and what what can i adjust with my cv and then you just like it gets you thinking you put you on your feet and then you, you improve on that and you will find out that like your last application or like the last few at least or like the last few at least will become way better so um apply as much as you can it doesn't mean like just keep submitting but then putting effort in your application and even when you get a, a, uh, a rejection letter don't, don't just take it like okay these people don't want me. I mean, it's okay to feel bad for a few minutes, but also take a step back and look like, 
what could I do to like really stand out and know that you're competing with like a lot of people, right? So yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that, um, Clara. So we have a question from Salaudin. Um, kindly unmute and ask your question. Okay, good evening, everyone, and good evening to the speakers and fellow listeners. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. So actually, I have a, I have a, I just I have just one question. I'm on, and my question is that I don't actually have educational background in finance, but I have background in data analysis and with my proficiency in Excel. Like I've kind of dived into financial analysis in the sense that at least for the past few months, I've dedicated my time to learning things from uh, financial modeling and analysis, or this time value of money, discounted cash flow. So I just want to ask that, okay, for someone like me who doesn't have educational background in finance or banking, but then I'm kind of very interested in this field so what advice do you have for me and then when i'm applying what do you think i can do to stand out can i take that one yeah yeah, yeah. okay sure so um first of all if you're going for like investment banking one thing that you notice is like these banks actually want people with diverse backgrounds right because they know that you're bringing in like a different perspective so for example, you mentioned like having a background in uh, data anal analysis, right? So for example, like if you're working with um, the tech team, the tech team of the bank, for example, if there's a deal or a transaction that will need someone that understand these things or like software, maybe you will be very handy, right? In that case. So I don't want you to like close your mind because most times I too, I used to think that same way. Like I've not done investment banking before and I don't think this is this is going to be struggle for me. There were people in my internship who did biology. There were people, I, I know someone that was a biology major at the University of Hof, uh, Oxford. There was someone who did chemistry and they were doing that investment banking internship, right? So like, don't just forget about the fact that, oh, like my major doesn't align with that. The questions that you should be asking yourself is, is this really something that I want to to do is this something that i'm going to put in effort to like learn because trust me there's a lot of learning to do on the job and the job is actually very demanding the hours are like very long so the question that you should be asking yourself is, is it uh, should be like am i willing to learn and one thing that you also notice is like even us like when you get on the job you learn like you'll be giving training even in your internship like the first week of our internship was all about training we still have access and the bank actually paid right for an external party to train us right so forget about like um in what what you studied in school just focus on if this is something that you feel like you want to do and you're very much interested in it just focus on like enhancing your skills and building your skills i think a skill like excel and powerpoint is something that anyone can learn if you're willing to write so like just for I and mean, like maybe you would want to like learn a little bit about accounting but then the other skills to like excel and powerpoint those are skills that like as a data uh, anal uh analyst i'm sure that you're very good at so that should not be much of a problem. So yeah, just focus on like enhancing your skills in accounting, also building the skills so that you have. Those skills are going to be very, very helpful. Mm, I think yeah, I would just like you. to add, add, thank you very much, Clara. I would also like to add something um, to that regard. I actually had a friend, um, not necessarily um, investment banking, but is working in a finance career and he doesn't have a finance background at all in terms of his major. Although he did go on to personally um, learn about um, finance on his own, did ICANN, did a lot of things, but like your major, one thing I've noticed is that what you did, your major is not really the real deal that they look at. They want to see you demonstrate this knowledge. Like, can you demonstrate that you understand the financial markets? And also, like Clara mentioned, the diversity, right? The wonder diversity. My friend did chemistry at um, at um, UI. He did chemistry, and now is is an equity research analyst. And he did not have a finance career um, background. So definitely, a finance background is not a, a must. I I see Abraham and raised up. Abraham, do you want to say something? Yeah. So I'll contribute by saying. The bank is being is big on diversity and inclusion, so they like people with diverse views because different deals have different 
different technicalities because if they just apply everybody that studied accounting and finance let's say they have something that is with chemistry or something even some project will tell you that if you understand chemistry because I, I once worked on it i had to talk about a lot of chemicals i was very confused but if someone was studying chemistry and had a pinch of finance in it, it will do way better because there are different teams there are teams that deal with technology teams that deal with um food so if you want to do food and nutrition if you're in the consumer and retail um um division you really do well because that's what they would want more so just make sure you just have a bit of practicality of finance maybe you've done some courses or you've done there's this virtual internship that people do now you've done stuff like that so don't show that you have practicality because in the internship they, they don't expect you to be so smart i mean to them going you are, you are a very dull person that's what that's, that's the belief so they don't expect you to know anything just show that you are willing to learn and you've done a bit of practicality so your your background or your course does not really matter very honest thank you very much i think um yeah forage yeah um yes clara mentioned yes. It, forage i think we can do two more questions then we had this end the session because we are really really running late uh, on time we are 15 minutes behind scale all right thank you for that martins so i think this is a general question that you know is going to be of benefit to everyone and it's from Deborah uh, Moyosolua. It says, for a novice seeking to dive into the banking sector, um, what's the starting point? Or how would you suggest the person uh, go about it? Uh, I think Rashid should take this. Thank you very much for the question. Right? So basically, in answering the question, I will just run down my own experience last year. And I was able to like navigate from January to the application period. So basically, around January, I had the intention that, okay, I want to join investment banking. It is investment banking or nothing. And I started basically and officially around March. And how did I start this journey? I started with um, a notice on Financial Modeling World Cup that I saw on LinkedIn, which is a competition organized for students globally, both undergraduate students and postgraduate students. So, during the course of this Financial Modeling World Cup, I was, with the little exam knowledge I had, I was ranked the best in Nigeria and ranked among um, the best 20 globally. So at the end of the competition, I was offered a course on financial modeling from Adventist. And this course itself started my finance background and finance career, which means I would like to like state the first point that once you are starting your career in finance, first set of the passion that yeah you really want to do this and any opportunity that comes the way try and take it so far it is meant for improving you making you have the experience needed for investment banking and the like and after the, taking the uh, financial modeling advantage courses i had a general overview of how the investment banking career works because before you start know about what you are going for is not just a random application it is something that you've learned something about and you are ready to do it. And aside from doing those, I also like improve my knowledge from registering for online courses that I know they are relevant to the divisions I will be applying to. Because even as I done last year, generally, I have an empty CV. An empty CV in the sense that there is nothing relating to investment banking on my CV, but I made my CV a, um, a tracker for myself in the sense that the moment I register for a course and I complete the course itself, I had it to the CV and my achievement or my learning processes during the process of um, doing the courses. So have the passion of what you want to do, first of all. And after having the passion, try to seek out for resources out there. It might be looking out for experiences that relate to um, the investment banking or working with a final career path or you taking a life of so, yeah. Sorry to cut you short. I, you are okay. mentioning courses. I see a lot of comments in the chat. If you okay. can name drop some of these courses that you think would be really, really helpful. Okay, so basically talking about the courses itself, thank God we had the opportunity of the financial modeling and valuation from Corporate Finance Institute last year. It was one great course that was given that we had opportunity of last year. If you can take that, if you can afford that, it is a great course. But if you can't afford that, we have a link 
where we can share all the videos for you guys, just to have understanding. The problem with it is just that you'll be having access to the certifications. It is just you learning the courses and having a better understanding of how investment banking career was and knowing the technical part of investment banking career part. And also another course I took last year was from Wall Street Financial Modeling, which is an Indian course. But one thing unique about this course itself is they literally work on a lot of um, financial models for different sectors where you can see financial modeling on real estate, financial modeling on um, financial institution group, financial modeling on industrials and life. So these are online courses you can probably take. And if you don't have access to that, just go to Coursera or any other relevant sources as well, just to like take courses you can afford. You are doing this just to improve your knowledge and also to add value to your CV. Because if you do it and you have the certifications, you'll be able to like express your achievement during the process of taking the courses. So they are very, very important. And aside that, your school's investment society as well are relevant things you can consider in adding to your CV. And finally, try and take part in competitions going around that relate to financial institutions and that relate to finance itself. And the likes of courses we have currently are and um, talking about the Amplify Me trading activities, this is one of the courses I take. I took last year during the preparation of my um, investment banking career path. And also, um, on LinkedIn, you will be able to like see relevant resources. Another thing you should also take notice: try and follow the relevant M and A deals going on in the market today. Because one relevant question you'll be asked during your interview is: teach me a recent M and A deals. And in the process of pitching a recent M&A deal, you are expected to say a lot. You are expected to talk about the rationales behind the deal, talk about the valuation price, talk about the acquiring company, talk about the financial advisors of the companies and all that. So these are the relevant things you must need. Make your CV, your tracker, your progress tracker as you are planning to like apply for investment banking career path. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Rashid. God bless you. Uh, okay, Clara also mentioned a YouTube channel. I'm going to drop that, but she already dropped that in the chat here on Google Meet, but I'm also going to drop that for people that are streaming live on YouTube. So the name of the um, YouTube is As Afzal is saying, so that's a channel where you can learn more about investment banking. I think some ones have also come across myself, uh, measures and inquisition. You can watch some of, they actually have some sessions where they go through an entire deal. You can definitely also check that too. So yeah, Coursera, like Rashid has mentioned. So I want to say very, very big thank you to our speakers. Thank you very much for sparing time out of your busy schedules. Um, some of the speakers, it was really, really on short notice for some people, like I literally just had to just message um, we're trying to get more and more people from like um, more companies, but it was a challenge. But eventually we had a lot of people and they were like, oh, I'm happy to speak. So I want to say thank you personally to Rashid. Thank you to Wisdom. Thank you to Hebram. Thank you to Clara. I will say a very, very big thank you. And also for the participants, um, I believe that this session, for me, it has also been insightful. I, I want to believe that it's the same for you. Um, the session is live streamed on YouTube, meaning that the recording would also be available. So if you missed out on anything, you want to replay, you want to rewatch, you can check YouTube. Um, you can check his Martin's Ajaka is uh, hosted on my personal YouTube channel. So you can check it there, it's right there, and um, you can watch. We also have um, previous sessions for those that are interested in data. We've hosted a session for data, for engineering, we've done that. Tomorrow we'll be having for operations. We bring in people that have done like risk at Bank of America. You know, bringing people from Bloomberg, bringing um, people from you know different divisions, not just investment banking. Then on Saturday also we'll be having markets. So we'll be bringing people for sales and trading, bringing people from World Bank, and these are people that you know they've gone through this experience. So the link will be shared out. You can check Martins Ajakai on. LinkedIn, you can check my personal page on LinkedIn 
um the links are available there so you can you know share with your network repost share with them let them register let them come and you know get this insight so that you know we can increase the opportunity net for every one of us so thank you very much everyone thank you for joining today's session and in the absence of any other thing i think this meeting has now come to its natural conclusion thank you and do have a lovely evening rest bye for now yeah please let the reactions come in let the reactions come in keep reacting keep reacting yeah thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you yeah 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 keep the reactions coming in thank you so um i'm going to end the live stream now yeah